In this video, we're taking a look at how to create a seamless carousel for social media. And we're focusing on Instagram carousel specifically today, but you can use this for any social media platform that offers a carousel feature. With that being said, let's go ahead, fire up Photoshop and dive right in. The first thing that we're gonna do with Photoshop started, we're gonna go ahead to the top left corner and click on new file. We're gonna get started by giving this file a name, we'll type in carousel, after giving our project a name, we're going to make sure that we are working with pixels rather than inches, centimeters, or anything else. At the time of this recording, the recommended size for an Instagram carousel is going to be 1080 by 1350. So with width, we're going to type in 1080, and for height, we're going to switch it to 1350. As for the number of slides, you could choose anything between two and 20. Today, I'm gonna keep it simple and just go with six slides. So I could either do 1080 times six or just go ahead, type in 1080 times six. Now the resolution right now is set at 300 pixels per inch. And that might be a little bit overkill for social media, but we're gonna go ahead and keep it there for now in case we wanted to print out these photos in the future. As for the color mode, RGB is fine. We can stick with 8-bit for the background contents. I'm okay with going with white. Basically all of the other settings are good to go. Once you have that dialed in, you can go ahead and hit create. Now we have a nice wide canvas to start working from. The next thing that we wanna do is create some guides, figure out where each of those 1080 by 1350 squares is gonna cut off. The way that we're gonna do that is by going to the view window, heading down to guides, and clicking on new guide layout. Now we know we want six different slides in this Instagram carousel. So for the number of columns, I wanna make sure that it's set to six. Next, I'm gonna click on margin and make sure that these are all set to zero. For the gutter, I'm also gonna make sure that is set to zero. It's basically the space in between each line. With those numbers dialed in, we can now go over and hit okay. With our guide styled in, I wanna make sure that they are locked into place so that way they don't move left to right, up from down, because we're gonna be using them to guide us through the rest of this project. So to lock those guides into place, what we're gonna do is go back to the view menu, go back down to guides, and we're gonna go ahead and click on lock guides, boom. Now those things are not moving and that's just gonna make the whole flow of the rest of this project that much easier. If I were to export this right now, it would just be one really long post. So what we wanna do now is create a slice on each one of those lines. To make those slices, what we're gonna do is hit C and we're gonna come over to our crop tool and make sure our slice tool is selected. In the top right corner, we can hit slice from guides. Boom, after hitting that button, it created a cut on each one of those lines. So now those 1080 by 1350 squares are gonna export just as that 1080 by 1315 squares. At this point, we have a really good foundation for creating this carousel that we want. What we wanna do now is import the images into this Photoshop document. So there's a lot of ways to do this, but one of my go-to ways is heading over to the file tab, scrolling down to script, and load files into stack. From here, you're gonna find all of those images that you want, hit browse. I know I have it saved to the desktop under carousel. So now I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these images. If you're doing this on your own, I recommend that you already have those images edited, whether that's in Lightroom or Photoshop. In this case, I'm working with some stock images just for the sake of this tutorial. I have my images selected. I'm gonna go ahead, hit okay hit OK again, and all of those images that we selected are gonna load into Photoshop. All right, I'm gonna hit Control minus here. You can zoom out and see that all of those images have been loaded into Photoshop. All right, so I went ahead and went to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack, and now all of my images that I wanted for this project are loaded into this window. With all of my images loaded into this new tab, I can now start dragging those things over to my carousel. So I'm gonna go ahead, select all of these images here, go to right click, hit Control C to copy all of those images. Go back to my main carousel window, click on my Layers tab and hit Control V. Now all of those images are gonna be put into that carousel document. I'm gonna go ahead and group these all together. Let me go ahead and give it a name. 
If I hit Control T, I could start to resize those images to fit onto this canvas size. Control minus to zoom out. And I'm just dragging those and trying to get them a little bit more visible. So I'm going to do that with the rest of these images so that way I can get a better idea of how I want to lay these things out. I have my images resized. They're fitting in this canvas. I could see all of them laid out. And now it's just time to play around with them and organize them in a way that I think would look best for this carousel. So I'm gonna go ahead, double tap on the image that I wanna play with first. In this case, it'll highlight it in the layers tab as well. I'm gonna drag that over to where I want it to start in the beginning. It's gonna snap to those borders. I'm gonna hit Control T to resize some things here. Clicking on the side, I think it's gonna look pretty good if I cover those first two slides, so I think that's gonna work pretty good. And from here, I could start layering stuff on top of it. Since the background is gonna be this rippling water here, I'm gonna choose some stuff, some portraits maybe that have some water in that, so that way it kinda blends a little bit more seamlessly. So I really like this portrait right here. I'm gonna drag it to the beginning, hit Control T and start resizing it to fit the way that I want. Something like that might look good. I'm gonna hit enter for now. And something that I noticed about this image is that there's a bit more headroom than I would like. So I'm gonna hit M here. That's gonna be my mask, making sure that the rectangle tool is selected. And from here, I can go ahead and just select what I want in the frame. I think something like that would look pretty good. From here, I'm gonna click this mask button. And what that's gonna do is erase everything around it. If I hit V, that's gonna be my move tool. So now I could rearrange things if I want to as well. To make this image really pop off of the background, what I'm gonna do is go down to this effects button, hit stroke. I'm gonna choose a number that I like. I typically like to choose something around 30. For position, we could hit center or inside. I personally like to keep things centered because it crops less of the image. So I like using the full image there. I'm gonna hit centered, blend mode, normal, opacity 100. Color, you could really pick anything that you want. Say red, for example, but I'm gonna stick with white just to make things look a little bit more clean and aesthetic. Once you have that stroke the way that you like, hit okay and it's gonna save it there for you. There's also options, you could layer in PNGs, let's say film overlays and things like that to get really creative with it. But today I just wanna keep things nice, simple, easy to follow. Everything within the Photoshop software. Okay, I think this would be a cool transition here to go to the next slide. So I'm gonna drag that there. I'm gonna make sure that this layer is above the other one. I'd also like this one to have the same stroke layer. So what I'm gonna do is hover over that effects button. Um, I'm on Mac, so I'm gonna press Alt and drag that onto the image above it. And from here, I could go ahead, hit Control T and resize it to my liking. If you ever wanna undo something, like now that I'm looking at it laid out, go down here and go up there, but I think there's just a little bit too much room. I'm gonna do that same thing. Hit Control Z, take that border off. Control T, make this a little bit bigger so I have more room and accuracy to play with it. M tool, hit M, or you can just go over to the side here. And from here, I'm gonna select what I want in that frame and what I don't. Again, hitting that mask tool, dragging that effect onto the image above, and I'm liking that a lot better. Resizing this just a bit, and boom, popping that into the corner. It's just like, hey, come with me. Let's see what's on this next slide. Hit enter when you like where it is. And that's most of what you need to know for laying out the rest of your images. So I'm gonna go ahead, do that really quick, and I'll show you the final result. From there, we're gonna take a look at export settings. All right, so I went ahead, reorganized all the photos to my liking. I swapped out the stroke a little bit. I wanted to go with the sharper edges. So I went with inside instead of going with center because the center stroke, it does round off those edges just a bit there. So I went with inside, nice sharp 
images there. I like the backgrounds. I like the layout. I think it's going to be a nice experience to swipe through this as a carousel. With our carousel dialed in the way that we like, it's time to go ahead and press export. So what we're going to do is head over to the file tab, scroll down to export and click on save for web. Let's go ahead and make this export menu just a little bit bigger. For me, this menu really punched in on that first image. So I'm going to hit control minus to zoom out just a bit. And as you can see, the color is a little bit lighter, a little bit faded compared to what we see on the actual Photoshop editing window. So that's a good indicator that we need to select the images that we want to export. This is where a lot of people get tripped up and why their images export as GIFs instead of JPEGs. So what we want to do is hold down shift and select each one of those slides. We're going to make sure that JPEG is selected. For the quality, we're going to click on maximum, make sure that the quality is turned up to 100%. And from here, we can go ahead and hit save. It's going to ask you where you want to save these images to. Once you have that final folder dialed in, you can go ahead and give it a rename. It's going to say carousel.gif. Ignore that, just give it a new name. Make sure images is selected only default settings is fine and hit all slices go ahead and hit save photoshop's going to do its thing but let's go ahead and make sure these images saved as jpegs instead of gifs go ahead and find that folder where you save those things if i hover over it it's going to say item type jpeg file go ahead double check with all of these all of those images saved as jpegs from here if you're on your desktop you could upload it to google drive and then download it onto your phone if you're using a mac you you could go ahead and just airdrop it to your phone and upload it to the social media site of your choosing. Hopefully at this point, you recognize that creating those carousels, it's not as intimidating as you might think. There's a lot of fun stuff that you could do with this. The best way to really dial in your flavor, your, your style, your finesse is to just start playing with the software. If there's anything that I missed or anything that you'd like to see in future videos, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.